If I said to you the following words, I suspect you would know precisely about whom I am speaking. This is Wretched Radio. White Jacket, Televangelist, Faith Healer. Almost certainly the words Benny Hinn come to mind. He is internationally famous. He has been on international TV for years. And if anybody represents the face of the prosperity movement, it is almost certainly Benny Hinn. Well, Benny Hinn doesn't exist on this planet all by himself. He actually has family. And we have the privilege of talking to one of his family members today. His name is Costi Hinn. His father's name is Henry, pastoring a church in Canada. Benny was pastoring a church in Florida, but as his fame increased, he decided to stop being a pastor of a local church, and he spent his days on the road doing major conferences around the globe. His nephew, the son of Pastor Henry Hinn, traveled with his Uncle Benny for two years. In other words... Costi Hinn, the nephew of Benny Hinn, knows Uncle Benny quite well. Not only is he a family member, but he worked with his uncle for years. In other words, Costi Hinn knows what he's talking about. He, he knows the behind the scenes. He knows Uncle Benny Hinn better than you and I ever will. And we have a privilege today because Costi has written a book called Defining Deception, Freeing the Church from the Mystical Miracle Movement. Read the book. It is a very fast read. Encourage you to get it. Read it. It will teach you the history of the charismatic movement. It will help you understand the main players. It will help you understand where this movement came from because it really exploded onto the scene in the very early 20th century, and now I dare say it is the fastest growing version of Christianity in the world. To talk to us about that movement is the nephew of Benny Hinn, Costi Hinn. Costi, very grateful, sir, that you're joining us today on Wretched. Thankful to be here, Todd. I really appreciate your ministry. No, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll just see if you say that in a few minutes, Pally. All right. <laughs> I got a, I've got a, I've got a few questions for you, obviously, okay. Costi. Do you hate your uncle? Absolutely not. Do you have an axe to grind? No. I'm not sure what the phrase means, but do I have a bone to pick? Would yeah. that be another one? Yeah, sure. Not at all. All right. Would you would you like to see your uncle Benny hurt? thrown in jail, ostracized, mocked? Definitely not. All right. With that in mind, sir, you traveled with your uncle for two years working for him on the road. I would like to ask you, Costi, if you were watching television one night and you're flipping through the channels, because that's what we men do, we flip through the channels, and there appears your uncle Benny Hinn on a platform on Christian TV Asking for money. Costi, would you send money into your uncle's ministry? I wouldn't. And that's because uh, working with him and really growing up in the inner circle of the faith healing and prosperity gospel and word of faith movement and add all the others, charismatic, third wave, all of that, uh, I saw where the money went. I knew why we would begin to fundraise harder at certain times throughout the year based on spending and whatnot. And uh, it's a lifestyle that is built for us on the backs of the sick and the poor, and donations are key to maintaining that lifestyle. And so uh, I I know there's well-intentioned people that give money to faith healers and little old ladies that are really being deceived. And so they mean well, and I think God is merciful and saves many people out of the movement. We know that happens all the time. But uh, no matter the intentions of people who give, that money is going towards maintaining the lifestyle of that man or woman. All right. So reason number one, you would not give money to your uncle. And I, I, I pondered that statement. I had to imagine if my uncle were in ministry and he, he appeared on television and said, send in money, or he even asked me directly, would you give money to the ministry? To say no to a family member 
is a very profound statement. So number one, you would say the money is not stewarded well. Would you please give us an example of how the money that many people give, poor people, people who are hoping for a miracle, who are promised things, where's some of that money going, Costi? Uh, well, when I say to maintain a man or woman's lifestyle, uh, I want to be clear, and you and I both know that, biblically speaking, in the church, we support the local church, and pastors all have a lifestyle. So that's great uh, that men and their families can live and serve the church full time, and that's great. But when I say lifestyle, I mean excessive lifestyle. Uh, Homes and properties upwards of $10 million, and I'm being conservative so that I'm my integrity is intact and we don't exaggerate, but the number gets a lot higher when you add in multiple properties. Uh, our hotel, when I traveled, one of my favorite places, and I've mentioned this before, was the Burj Al Arab, the massive hotel in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, that's shaped like a sail. It's on a man-made island. You get picked up in three luxury cars, and we stayed in the Royal Suite. I remember sleeping in my own room within the Royal Suite. There were multiple rooms. Uh, The square footage is beyond what uh, most people will ever own if they had two homes put together. And it was $25,000 per night to stay in the Royal Suite. And the hotel has actual gold all throughout it, literally thousands and thousands of tons of gold. You can look this up. It's legit. And then we had an entourage with us. And so there were other suites that we had for uh, what was a layover on our way to go and serve in India, in Mumbai, for that crusade in 2004 that had over a million people in attendance. And that would give you an idea of how we're living, or how I was, and still my family members do, off of donations. And the travel was not on uh, Emirates, or Cathay Pacific, or United Airlines. The travel was on a Gulfstream 4 that we leased from Morris Cirillo in Florida. At that time, we were leasing it. And so uh, you're, it's birds of a feather flock together, and there is one thing that you enjoy above it all. It's not the gospel. It's not the glory of Christ. It's not the joy of doing real ministry. It's a lifestyle that gives you anything you want. Costi, you talk about in your book, again, it's called Defining Deception. When you went to school in Canada, uh, either your mother or your father would drive you to school. In what kind of vehicle? Uh, Mercedes-Benz. I see. So you really, from whether it was traveling with Uncle Benny or just your family lifestyle at home was was funded on the donations of people who gave trusting that it would be used well. Yeah, and we tied ourselves into Christ and into the gospel. So to give you an idea, uh, we would always elevate the man of God so that when people were giving— They were giving to support the man of God, who is God's mouthpiece and his herald. And therefore, when people are giving to us, and we lived, the square footage was just under 10,000 square feet, our mansion up in Canada, um, with the Benzes and all that lifestyle. I had my own sport court growing up, a hot indoor hot tub, steam room, outdoor pool, just the, I mean, we lived like it was the Ritz-Carlton every day. And that is, is applauded because we're serving the Lord. And we should be taken care of. And the laborer is worthy of his wages. And you shouldn't muzzle the ox while he's treading the grain. And every scripture is twisted. And, of course, we are the benefactors. As you mentioned, a pastor should indeed be paid for his labors. The ox shouldn't be muzzled. But your particular ox was getting a little bit a little bit fat on the, on the feedings of poor people. All right. So, Costi, you would not give money to your Uncle Benny Hinn's ministry because the money is not stewarded well. What would be reason number two? Reason number two would be that the gospel he's preaching, that the donations are going towards, which the donations are really funding the lifestyle, is a false gospel. Uh, It is the Jesus of word of faith theology, the Jesus who was just a man who was anointed by God, and therefore you can be just like him, the Jesus who was born again, uh, the Jesus who just really wants you healthy, happy, and wealthy, Uh, faith not in Christ to save your soul and to be justified by faith, but faith as a force is what we taught in order to unlock all the windows and riches of heaven, 
That's not what faith is. Confession is confessing your sins to Christ. Romans 10, 9, to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. That's not a confession to get a Bentley or a Ferrari or a house. You don't. You can't use uh, faith for salvation as faith for stuff. It doesn't work that way. And so knowing now what I understand, having studied the Word of God on these topics, and of course the Holy Spirit graciously causing the scales to fall from my own eyes and saving my life, uh, I would never give money to that version of the gospel, and it's because it's a false gospel. Reason number one, you would not give to Uncle Benny's ministry. The money is being frittered away. Reason number two, he doesn't preach the true gospel. When we return on Wretched with Costi Hinn, nephew of Benny Hinn, how it is that Costi and why it is that he left the employ of Uncle Benny Hinn and what you can do and say to help somebody you know and love who may be following a prosperity preacher like Benny Hinn to get out of it. Next on Wretched Radio. Shout out to our gospel partners. It is your ongoing monthly support that allows us to do Wretched Radio every single day and provide the broadcast, the entire program, for free to anybody on iTunes, Android, or at our website. Thank you for being a gospel partner. If you enjoy or benefit from Wretched Radio, would you please consider joining those partners so that we can continue to preach the gospel, simply visit wretched.org. 